In our last episode, Batteries and Monitors, we briefly touched upon the importance of an energy audit. I've had a lot of questions about how do I complete an energy audit. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go through a detailed energy audit. Stay tuned. The audit sheet that we're going to be using today comes completed with some of the most common appliances and their load draw. You'll notice on this piece of paper that lights and 12 volt appliances are at the top and 120 volt appliances are at the bottom. We'll go through this item by item. You can download this page from our website and I'll also put a link to it at the end of this video. We'll start with lights. First the halogen lights. A lot of those um, puck lights you have may be halogen. So count those. Those are 20 watts each. Next is the fluorescent tubes and finally the LEDs. Hopefully most of you have changed out all your incandescent bulbs to LEDs. I personally have two fluorescent tube fixtures at 40 watts each. And I run those for about two hours a day each. So in this example that would be two times 40 watts would be 80 watts times two hours would be 160 watt hours per day for the fluorescent tubes. I also have 10 LED fixtures at five watts each. Then those run probably three hours a day. So that would be 10 times five is 50 times three would be a total of 150 watt hours per day. Moving, moving on down, we come to the 12 volt appliances starting with fantastic fans that pull 40 watts each when they're running. Water pump. It's a pretty good load. It's 85 watts when it's running. But how long does a water pump actually run? If you think about that most water pumps for RVs are rated at three gallons per minute, if you run them for very long you'll run out of fresh water. So I would get, venture a guess that the water pump probably only runs six to seven minutes a day in most applications. So let's say on the outside that you actually run your pump for 12 minutes a day. That'd be 0.2 hours at 85 watts would still only be 17 watt hours per day. Moving down the next one is a furnace fan. Again, they pull a fairly high power rating at 90 watts. And those do run in the winter time uh, about 50% of the time. So an eight hour night, that'd be the fan would be running four hours. So that'd be 360 watt hours per day. Composting toilet fan. It's one of those things that runs 24 hours a day and runs about 20 watts. So if you have a composting toilet, don't forget to account for that. The last thing on our appliances for the 12 volt side is what we call phantom draws. Those things that you don't think about, you can't turn them off, you're not in control of them. Things like control boards uh, that are constantly monitoring temperatures in your water heater, uh, your thermostats, uh, backlights, uh, clocks uh, and your safety alarms, your CO2 detector, carbon monoxide and fire detectors, all of those are drawing 24-7. Uh, I usually put in 30 watts for those running 24 hours a day or 720 watt hours uh, of phantom loads. So let's not forget those. Now let's take a look at the 120 volt appliances which if you have those and you're going to be boondocking, you're running off of an inverter. The inverter itself uh, has a uh, what we call an idle draw. Just because it's on, it's pulling about 30 watts 
24 hours a day. So that's 720 watts just for having an inverter. Um, that is going to power our flat screen TVs, satellite receivers, Blu-ray players, so forth like that. In my personal experience, I watch TV uh, in the evenings and we probably watch five hours a day. So that's the TV and the satellite receiver five hours a day. So the TV would be 300, five hours times 60 watts. And the satellite receiver would be another, uh, what is that, five times 35 watts. Um, then the uh, coffee maker, we use a cure egg so it doesn't run for very long, probably three minutes a day uh, at 1200 watts though, so that's 60 watt hours per day. Microwave, probably run that for 10 to 12 minutes a day, so we'll call it 12 minutes or 300 watt hours per day. Um, and then uh, other things that you need to consider that are on here, you can do this for yourself. Hair dryers, 1200 watts. Probably don't run them, but three to four minutes. Instapot, that's a thousand watt draw, and those may run for a while, so that's something you need to be aware of. Laptops, 50 watts. Desktop computers, 170 watts. Air conditioner, if you're gonna try to run air conditioning off of your solar or your inverter, that's 1800 watts per hour. Uh, water heaters, I just don't recommend. That's 1,500 watts, and you really have very little control over how often that runs. Uh, residential refrigerator, big energy hog, 200 watts, and they probably run 10 hours out of 24. So you're looking at close to 2,000 watt hours per day. So anyway, you do this, add it all up, your watt hours, and then divide by 12 and a half, which is the, kind of the standing voltage of your battery, and figure out how many amp hours you have uh, are using. After we figure that, we'll talk about how to convert that into battery bank. Okay, so when I add all mine up, I get 3,162 watt hours per day divided by 12.5 volts gives me 253 amp hours that I'm going to use each day. So since I can only run my battery bank down to 50% because I'm using AGM batteries, I need to have twice that amount. So I need close to 500 amp hours of battery bank to support my usage. If I'm using lithium batteries, I can get what get away with a little less. I could probably get away with 300 amp hours. But uh, if you're using lead acid or AGMs, you need twice your your uh, amp hour daily draw in batteries, and then we'll support that with solar. Thanks for watching today. We hope you found this video helpful. If so, be sure and give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos.